Hello, everybody. I'm your host, Eric Bird, here at StopStrugglingNow.com. And today, we're going to talk about what are you doing with your time? Are you wasting it? Are you spending it wisely? But we're going to talk about some economic inequality today. It might be uncomfortable, but we got to talk about it so you know where you stand, so you can get to where you need to be in a comfortable position to be able to do what you want, when you want, how you want. And welcome to FOSI Optics. Check. Stop struggling now. Gear. Check. And please like, subscribe. And click the bell below so you get the latest updates. Now, let's get to it. All right, welcome back. Normally, I start off with the YouTube channel page, but today I'm going to start off with the Stop Struggling Now merch page. Because I keep forgetting every time I say that we have merch, I rarely show the merchandise page. So ladies and gentlemen, you can come over here and get merch right now. It's free shipping, no tax. So the price that you see is the price that it costs. So we have the new peach color, as I call it, women's, which is awesome. CEO of my life, which is what I'm trying to get everyone to be here. So now, without further ado, let's go over here to the Stop Struggling Now YouTube channel page. And I must admit that we are now over 6,000 subscribers, so I have to thank you so much for your support. Thank you for watching the videos. Thank you for the comments. Thank you for the emails. Thank you. It's been a pleasure. So all I'm going to say here is notice the join button over here on the right, and that helps support the channel. And with all that said, let's move into this you know, everybody wants to be rich. Who can blame anybody? You get to see these 200,000, 500,000, million dollar cars. You get to see these million dollar, two million dollar homes. All the while, you have some reason, some motivation to get to that pinnacle of your life that you think is a pinnacle. So I'm going to talk a little bit deeper than normal today because I'll. A lot of people don't even understand what they're working for because you're sitting there working nine to five. You're sitting there working, being self-employed. You're sitting there working, doing something that can provide for you and or your family. But what are you doing it for? Because as every day goes by, you are getting older as a human being. You are frail. And also what a lot of people seem to forget is tomorrow is not promised to anyone so while you're sitting here saying I'm gonna do this later in life I'm gonna do this at such and such time you might not reach that time that goal may not be able to be achieved so we're gonna talk about today some realistic numbers so you understand when somebody says they're a millionaire when somebody says they're a billionaire when somebody says that they make $500,000 a year, $150,000 a year. You have to understand, this is not the normal people. Just because they can buy these things that you aspire to, remember I used the word things. So keep all of this in mind as we go through something today. I am going to take time out to go through the medium income of different people. So if you're going to be offended based on race, creed, age, or gender, then I suggest you might not want to watch this because you can only be true to yourself and numbers don't lie. It's not to be used as an excuse. You just have to understand once you know the numbers, you know what you're up against. You know what you have to do because some people have to do extra to get there. And 9 out of 10 people do not want to do extra. Are you going to be 10% who wants to do extra? That's the real question. And how much time of your life do you want to waste to get to the extra? Let's get real, ladies and gentlemen. This is the time. This is the video. This is the one. 
So let's talk about it. Let's look at this screen right here. This is from CNBC, July 2019. And this right here is going to be a... This is kind of sad when you really look at this because this is the median income. Okay, you can see right here across the top, median usual weekly earnings of full-time wage and salary workers for age and sex. Second quarter 2019 averages not seasonally adjusted. We don't ever want seasonally adjusted because we all know farming season is a certain time, agricultural season is a certain time, you know. So you don't ever want that. But this is the median. Median actually means there are people, half of the people make more and half of the people make less. That's what median means. Okay? And this is based on U.S. Bureau of Labor Statistics. And quite frankly, since it's a government thing, I don't really like using those. But for our purposes, I'm going to use it this time and we'll see where this goes. But just keep in mind, this red here is total. It doesn't matter. The blue is men. The black is women. Look at this number. Look at down here at the bottom, ladies and gentlemen, of this graph. Do you see $600 a week, $800 a week, $1,000 a week, $1,200 a week? Half of the population makes less than $1,200 a week. When you start taking this out, that's $4,800 a month. Half of the population 4800 times 12 is a little over fifty thousand dollars that's why half of the population makes less than fifty thousand dollars sixty percent of the population makes less than forty thousand dollars and this ladies and gentlemen is the reason why you have to start thinking about time and time is not on your side and look at here Look at this. We'll start at 20 years old. At 20 years old, $600 a month. 20 to 24 years old, most people are making $600 a month. We all know that is only $2,400 or $600 a week. That's only $2,400 a month. We all know that, right? So that is not a lot of money when you have to think of where you live you generally have to make 30 percent or more so let's get real that means you have to can you can only afford a place without any other expenses at 800 dollars a month i again i don't know too many places i can live for 800 dollars a month it's going to be safe but anyhow this is what we're talking about from age 20 to 24. This is when most people have just now finished college, who now have debt because of college. Other people who didn't go to college, they're still making this money, except they don't have the debt. So you tell me who's further along, but we're going to have stats that's going to tell us who's further along later, because just straight out the box, if you have a college education over time you earn more money let's just keep it straight this is why people go to college now look at here 25 to 34 year olds the median is less than a thousand that's almost like nine hundred dollars a week a lot of you might be saying hey eric i like thirty six hundred dollars a month that's 40 g's a year I'm saying that ain't going to cut it if you want to be independent. If you want to have these nice $150,000, $250,000 cars, ain't going to cut it. All right? Let's keep things real. You're sitting there watching Instagrams. You're sitting there watching YouTube videos. You're sitting there watching Snapchat. You're sitting there watching Facebook where these guys are posting up their $200,000 cars. Clearly, they have to make more money than 50% of the population or 60% of the population. So your question has should be is, how do I get there? And how much time? Again, time. How much time is it going to take me to get there? Because I'm going to tell you right now. Sadly, I think this is sad. My dad, on the other hand, thinks this is cool. I'm going to give you an example. I'm going to move along so you guys can read wikipedia 
the peak earning years. But before I do that, let me go over this real quick before I get into this story. Look here, 35 to 44, these are apparently peak. That's a little under 1,200. So again, we're still not at 4,800 at 35 to 44 years old. Ladies and gentlemen, you might want to find out how, what the cost of living is in different states. Because we all know if I live in Louisiana, Alabama, Mississippi, it costs a lot less than me living in California, Arizona, or Florida for that matter. New York. Let's face facts. So somebody could live a hell of a lot better, 35 to 44 years old, making under 1200 a week, living in those states that I mentioned, Alabama, Mississippi, Tennessee, and all that. But living in Cali, living in Vegas, living in New York City, Living in Jersey, living in Philly, we might have a problem. Living in Miami, we might have a problem. But half the population makes less than 1,200. At 45 to 54, we still have half the population making less than 1,200. Are you worried yet? Because you should be worried because if you're talking about your peak earning years are somewhere around 35 to 65 that means you're in the workforce or are you doing the right thing saying you know what let me get some business going on around here because this time I'm trading in to earn this money life is moving by the way as you get older you have health issues let's just face facts I call this the Superman syndrome when I'm 16 I'm Superman I can don the cape. When I'm 25, I can don a cape. When I'm 35, I can don a cape. When I'm 45, I can still don the cape. But when you get to be 55, 65 and older, all of a sudden, you have health issues. And if you don't have health issues, all of a sudden your knees creak. All of a sudden you wake up and your back has pain. So remember, the time you're choosing while you can don the cape and fly around and be Superman and enjoy anything and everything the world has to offer, most people are slaving away. You don't want to be a slaving away type of person, I'm hoping, because otherwise you wouldn't be here at Stop Struggling Now, because otherwise I'm wasting my time talking about getting those extra streams of income. So I'm hoping the majority of you are sitting here saying, you know what, Eric, I don't want to be 50 years old and have creaky knees, a bad back, and any other health issues that may arise. Because I know people that are less than 50 years old who have cancer. I know less than 30-year-olds who have cancer or who have caught some other disease that ends up being a problem. They weren't born with it, but when they're 35, they find out, oh, I have lupus. I have an immune, autoimmune disease problem. That Superman syndrome that you had the whole time, you were 18 to 30 to 35 to 45, you're letting time go by, thinking you have another year, another two years, another three years. This is why you need to start getting down to business immediately. And by the way, just because you're older, you don't get off the hook. You need to also be getting those extra streams of income, but we're going to get into the allocations. But let's get to the situation here where we have the earnings. As you can see in the 70s, these are the people that you guys are calling boomers. The peak earning years were between 35 and 44 for the people with the elementary school education. After you graduated from high school and college, the peak earning years are 45 to 54. Remember that chart? Where you see over here, around 35 to 65, people are generally earning a little under $1,200 a week. That's exactly what this is illustrating after you went to college and high school. And this is why they had to monetize college so people would owe a lot of money because they knew that later on in life they would be worth a lot more money. And in 2009, peak was 40 years old to 55 years old what do you think it is right now in 2020 
I don't really have the answer to that, but I have this chart that tells me from the time I'm 35 to 65, I'm damn near making the same amount of money. Meanwhile, there's inflation. Meanwhile, there's tariff wars. Meanwhile, everything costs more across the board. But your income isn't going up exponentially. And the reason why this is a median income for salary workers is because the key word, salary workers. If these workers say, I have an extra business going on on the side, and they're making money because we're in the internet age where it's easily where you can make two or three or four hundred dollars or more per month. That changes the whole landscape. That means you don't have to be a salary employee to make twelve hundred dollars a week, aka four thousand dollars a month. And by the way, the tax benefits are humongous. Are you going to pay 24, 25% taxes or are you going to try to pay 15% taxes? All right, let's get along. Here, this is from Payscale. And don't be surprised, this is men and women, but we're about to get deep into color lines because there's a lot of people in America that think everybody's equal. And I'm sad to say, I don't know what history books you've been reading, but no history book says everybody's equal. And it doesn't change when it comes to economics either. So here you go. Earnings growth by gender. Look at here. You can see the age graph down here at the bottom. You can see. This is from Payscale. I have a link down below in the description. Look at this. 35, 41, 45. You can see the peaks for men. The men still escalate. After around 37. They still escalate. Up until around 55, 57, somewhere in there. But look here. Women, they don't even get to 90% of what the men make. They earn basically a little under 70% on average from what men make. So I have daughters. This is why they have to have extra skills. This is why they can't be ordinary if they want to make just as much money as men make. We're going to get into it, ladies and gentlemen, because there's going to be, I'm going to show you how much people make, depending on what they're doing. So that's the first thing on pay scale. You have to understand women have to do extra just to get even with men. Now, let's get down to this. A lot of you are in certain little legal fields or healthcare field or just do sales. Look at the potential growth legal <laughs> the litigious United States of America this is no shocker 265 percent growth because there's always some legal maneuvering going on in America so of course there's going to be growth but look how many years do you have to spend to become a lawyer and then have to pay it back because most law schools cost a lot of money so it's almost like the healthcare being a doctor. How many years does it take to be a doctor? And then you have to have this, this ungodly amount of money that you're going to owe because of the schooling. But those are the two highest professions with the growth. Let's scroll down a bit. Look at this gender-wise. You see once again, ladies and gentlemen, look at the men. Advantage. Huge advantage. A woman who's in the same legal occupation, sure, she makes a lot of money, but the men, the, the pace is off the scale. When you're talking about two times more money than a woman would make for the same position. All right, women, don't give up. This is just the simple reason why you have to have your extra streams of income. Here we go with the peak earnings by demographic group. And look at this. All men. Peak earning age is 55. Imagine. You can don the cape at 20, 30, 40. And now you're 55 years old. The cape is getting a little worn out. And the same things you could do at 25 and 35, you can't do at 55. 
Let's just face facts. But this is when your peak earning years are $100,000. This is significant when you start looking at numbers. Now, women, and, and look at here. The median income is fifty two grand. Look at here. All women, 44 is your peak earning years. And it's 66,000, which is incredible. That's a significant difference between men. You can do a lot more damage with $100,000 than you can with 66. Now look what comes next. The Asian men, the highest median income at peak of 52 years old, $132,100. Everybody on podcast, this just blows me away. Why do you think Asian men peak at 52 and their earnings are 132? That's incredible. Maybe schooling, maybe education, which also Asian women, they're next at 95,600. But their peak is at 57. Go down the list. But here is something that's daunting. Black men. Peak earning years is 59. Almost the oldest group that matches Hispanic women at $80,000 a year. Well below Asian women. Well below Asian men. Well below Hispanic men. And of course, well below white men as well. That is a significant number. And if anybody in America thinks that there isn't some suppression, then I don't know what to tell you. You're crazy. The numbers don't lie. Here is black women at 61,000 at their peak earnings at 52 years old. All men at age 22 has a median earnings of 52. This is incredible. Hispanic men, 108,000 at their peak of 57. Hispanic women, their peak is 71,000 at age 59. Here is white men, their peak is 54 and they make 104 median. And again, white women. 68,800. Out of all the female groups, well, major female groups, black women make the less, lesser of everybody. Out of all men groups, black men make the less. Is anybody paying attention here? So when somebody says everything is equal, when somebody says, nah, there's no discrimination. Everybody has the same chance at the job. Hooey, BS, call it what you want. But all I'm saying is time waits for nobody. So therefore, no matter which demographic you fall under, you may think about you need an additional business income coming in. Quite naturally. The people who make more money, they're more comfortable, so they may not start their business. Let's move along. This right here, Hispanic workers, men, Hispanic women, and white men. Look at here. This is the color coding. Hispanic women. Look at where they're at. At the onset, they're earning just as much as Hispanic men, just as much as as Uh, white men until the whole time until they get around 47 years old look there is no disadvantage until they're around 47 years old there's a separation and the separation is that the white men naturally make more Hispanic women Hispanic men make less but Hispanic men are able to boost up somehow after their 50s, in their 50s, when they're 55, 57, 58, 59, let's talk about damn near near retirement. Okay, 
And then read this up here, ladies and gentlemen. I won't go into it any further. Now, look at this. I already showed this chart, so I won't go into it again. And now, here is the chart when we're talking about black women, black men, white men. You can see from the get, up until you get around 31, that's when everything's equal. But as soon as you get around 31, 32, 33, all of a sudden, the white men take off. Black men and women stay damn near equal. Granted, the black men in purple has a little upside later on in life. But they're not that far up. They're only at a 60, not even at 60% level compared to the white counterparts. So you're asking yourself right now, if you haven't already, you're spending all these years working your behind on. Why? We have 2020. We have internet. We have high speed internet. We have ways to make additional income. In fact, we have ways that you don't even need to be working at these salary positions and make just as much money. I'm hoping this chart illustrates exactly what I'm talking about, about your time. Because here's an asset allocation screen. And I'm going to tell you right now, the story about my dad has always been, he lived 40 years ago when he was growing up, 30 years, 20 years, whatever the number is. He's growing up and it was pretty standard. He's in the military. Uh, you work there 20 years, you retire. Then he has another career where he could be an educator, work there for 20 and retire. And you get paid your retirement. He didn't grow up in an environment where you may not get paid for your retirement or your pension funds. He, did, he didn't grow up in that era. Right now, we are in that era where you may not get paid because you work for a company 20, 30 years. So he didn't have to worry about what people are going to have to worry about 10 years, 20 years, 30 years from now. So therefore, he could never see my side of the fence because most of my contemporaries did the playbook. Go to school, got a job. And then they're working somewhere for 20 years. My dad calls me up and he says, hey, how's your uh, teammates? How do they do? You know, guys I went to high school with. He's always interested. Uh, the guys I went to high school with, they're, they're all doing great because we grew up in an era where you could get a job and work somewhere for 20, 30 years. That wasn't the issue. The issue, though, for him was he equates it to, well, I guess they're doing good because they're almost up for retirement in a few years. So uh, they're, they must be doing good. I say, yeah, they're doing great. And then I say, yeah, well, here's the trade-off. Because I had my cape on since I was 20, 20, and when I'm 30, when I'm 40, I still have my cape on. I was able to go anywhere, anytime, any place that I wanted to. Meanwhile, they were their trade-off was they got to work 10 months out the year, 11 months out the year, and had a few vacation days. So the whole time I'm donning my cape, these guys are locked up is what I call it. So they always tried to figure out, my friends, contemporaries, tried to figure out how I'm able to do what I'm doing. But my dad was always more like what they were doing putting in their work, trading their time for the money was more important. This is what you have to ask yourself, which is more important when you can don the cape or are you going to worry about later? Because remember, later on, things are going to cost more. Things are going to health-wise may be of a situation for you. Are you going to have the funds to handle this during that time? And are you still going to be able to get around to where you need to get around to comfortably and have the fun? Because I'll just say straight out the box, are we popping bottles in Dominican Republic? Are we popping bottles in Australia? Are we popping bottles wherever I want it in Europe? Are you with me? So do you really care if somebody else is driving a two, three, four hundred thousand dollar car? Now, I know everybody is these days. I've never been impressed by that. You know why? Because to me, it's a waste of money. 
To other people, it's some sort of awesome environment. So it all depends on your mindset, what you're willing to accept as being valuable. To me, valuable was being able to traipse around the world whenever you felt like it. Now, here are the assets. And again, I went over this about three, four weeks ago. And a lot of people may not have understood exactly what this chart is showing on your screen. Because right here, when somebody has their net worth is basically 10K to 100K, look at, this is cash here in the green. This is your primary residence, which for the life of me, again, we can argue all day long, I don't think a primary residence is an asset. The only reason it's an asset is because it goes up in value. But again, I submit to you, you can leave a comment down below. How is it an asset when I buy a house for $400,000, I pay taxes of $6,000 a year, I pay energy bills, which everybody has to pay, I pay full-on maintenance, so if the fridge breaks or if the, 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 the sink gets stopped up, if my furnace, by the way, your furnace does need to be maintained, your AC and furnace unit needs to be maintained, that costs me money. How is it that none of that expense is included in the purchase of the primary residence? As people make more money, they start realizing, wait a minute, I just paid five grand for an AC unit. Wait a minute, I'm paying $7,000, $6,000 a year in taxes. Wait a minute, what am I doing? All that money that you're paying out, nobody calculates into the cost of your home, which I always have. And as you can see, as people start making more money, notice their primary residence starts getting reduced. I will have a link to this allocation from Financial Samurai because this is the easiest chart to explain things. And notice also, see this vehicle? The orange section here, notice this orange section starts shrinking as well. Notice this. Okay. Life insurance starts shrinking as you make more money. There's a reason for that. Because as you have more uh, net worth, you don't need to carry as much insurance. So that, that's standard. But what I want to bring your attention to, ladies and gentlemen, is... The blue section, which is the business interest section. Notice when a person is making less than 100K a year. Notice this blue section is so small. But notice how it starts blossoming up when people are making a million dollars net worth. 10 million net worth. And heaven forbid if you can get to 100 million. But notice the business interest is the highest portion when you're talking about high net worth individuals. So look, if you at net worth or 100K, business ain't your thing. If it's 10K, it ain't your thing. This only illustrates that this should be your thing. This is why you need to get those seven streams of income that has nothing to do with you working at a salary position. As many business interests you can get, the better that you can get to your goal that you need in life. And the sooner you start your business interests, the sooner you can get to your goal, in my opinion. You can comment down below if you think otherwise. And the charts and the graphs do not lie. And notice what's next. Real estate. That is real estate that generates income. Notice what's next. Assets managed. Trust funds is what they're calling it. Notice fixed income investments. Notice stocks in the light blue. This is what we have been talking about, ladies and gentlemen. Real estate, businesses, stocks. If you want to be a superstar, if you want to be a 10 percenter, this is what you need to achieve. I don't know what more to tell you. So all this time that you thought I'm talking about credit, 
all this time you think I'm talking about real estate all this time you're thinking I'm talking about stocks and bonds all this time you think I'm talking about businesses this has been the playbook the whole time and once you start giving up the notion that you have to work and spend your time 10 hours a day 9 hours a day to achieve greatness you don't but you can work eight hours a day, nine hours a day, ten hours a day, and use that to achieve your greatness. But don't spend 20 years on it unless that's a plan. Because like I said, nobody's guaranteed to live from 20 to 40. Nobody's guaranteed to live 20 to 50. Nobody's guaranteed to live 20 to 60. Tomorrow, you're not guaranteed. So with all that said, Let's get down to extra business activity. And thank you for watching. Thank you for listening. And please like, subscribe, and click the bell below so you get the latest updates. And I know it's hard out here. That's why we're talking about the barriers to entry that I've been talking about over the last year and a half, two years. That's why I always start with the low barrier of entries. Because if you have a phone, if you have the internet, you have a way to make additional income and you also have a way to get out of working for someone else and making their dreams come true while they're off playing that should be you so who's with me with all that said keep your head up keep moving and I'm out